Hey guys, I'm Mike Wang, here with Expert Tips. Good coaching means being able to make smart adjustments in game. That's why this week, we're going to show you how to make some basic adjustments in NBA 2K20. If you're up against a team that's exploiting your offensive or defensive game plan, then you better know how to adjust on the fly. For both ends of the floor, just hit right on the D-pad and adjust accordingly. And a look behind the curtain here. Final preparations for the challenge ahead. Hoping to come out of the gates strong. There below is Barclays Center and the Borough of Brooklyn, where there's never a dull moment. Welcome to the weekend, everybody. Let's get it going with NBA action on 2K Sports. In this one, you'll see the Philadelphia 76ers against the Brooklyn Nets at Barclays Center with Greg Anthony. Hey, Dave. Well, Kyrie Irving rediscovered his maternal lineage with the White Mountain family of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. He lost his mother at a young age, and by connecting with her roots, he's found a piece of himself. The tribe gave him the name Little Mountain. Kevin? Great story, DA. Thank you. Now that we have a second, let's take a quick peek at the rebounding numbers for the last handful of seasons for Allen. He's really made that a focus of his game these past few years, and it's paid big-time dividends for him. He's become a much better rebounder, and it's increased his value as a player by leaps and bounds. Now a look at Philadelphia's starting lineup. The tall lineup out there for the 76ers. Simmons, Richardson, Harris, Horford, and MB. And looking at the Nets, Durant plays the four with Allen at center. Spencer Dinwiddie out there with Kyrie Irving. And it's Lavert in at the three, the small forward. Dinwiddie against Richardson. Here's Embiid. And Durant sends it back. The pass to Dinwiddie. Irving looking over the floor. Back to Dinwiddie. Moving against Simmons. Who's back up? And Allen with the layup. I wouldn't want to be the guy who has to keep him off the boards. He is a beast on the offensive boards. Richardson the pass to Simmons. There should be plenty of fireworks out in the backcourt tonight. And this one, of the guards you played alongside, who is the best combination passer score? See, that's a tough one. I just got to give everybody you a, a shot lot of them, though, didn't you? Huh? Yeah, I know, man. I didn't know it was going to be a test today. Uh, I got to go with <laughs> I got to go with my boy Rod Stricker when I played with him at the Wizards. I think he's the oh, best yeah. finisher ever, and he led the league uh, in assists. My boy Jay Will, shout out to White Chocolate. Uh, I mean, he is one of the most creative players I ever played with, but he could shoot it from deep. He was a guy that liked to shoot it from Curry Land, and he could pass it. And, and then lastly, I'd have to, of course, go with my man Mike Bibby. Mike Bibby could do it all. So I, I've been blessed to play in, in four to play with Shoot some great two. scores and, and combination passes in this league. Three terrific names. The first one falls. And the 6'6 point guard Spencer Dinwiddie. Second round pick of the Detroit Pistons in 2014. You know, Greg, they might have wished they held on to him. One of the most improved players in our league. Last season, he signed that four-year, $48 million extension from the Nets, rewarding his growth. So he makes one of two as the second one misses. 
And for the Sixers, the health of their draft picks has been a story. Zaire Smith, Markel Fultz, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, all missing significant time with injury. Health continues to be a key for them, uh, GA. Embiid in particular, he's missed some games last year, missed some back to backs. And, uh, he's seven foot two. You just hope his knees uh, can withstand the grind. They got to keep him going to reach their goal. Embracing the physicality of the game. Simmons, he's used to getting knocked around a bit on the way up, but he's okay. Dinwiddie with it, and it's Richardson picking him up. Pass to Levert. Three pointer. But they get it back. The kick out to Irving over Simmons, and the Nets miss again. Man, I thought that one was going to go down. Mid range jumpers. Oh, man, that's usually a bunny with the D playing soft like that. They're struggling here early. One for five now. The D has them bottled up so far. Dinwiddie passes to KD. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. Can't allow that kind of positioning, uh, especially for a guy like Durant. He's so effective with his length inside. Richardson the bounce pass. And Bede kicks to Simmons. And there's the call on Kyrie Irving. That's his first foul. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. Harris with it. Guarded now by Irving. That's leading by three. Durant on the wing. Here's Allen. Lavert in the corner. And stolen by Simmons. Here's Harris. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Harris is so quick on the drive. Sometimes defenders have to foul him and just hope he misses the shot. Well, you look at the career of Tobias Harris, and boy, he's bounced around a bit. Has never slowed his development or production, though. You put him anywhere, and he'll find a way to help his team. That's good from Harris. And with Harris, he's been moved so many times. You know what, Greg? You forget he's still quite young. Yeah, I mean, he really is just starting to enter what should be the prime of his career. Has improved every offseason and is a great rebounder and scorer. And Brooklyn making a change here. Harris has checked in, and he can't hit the second. I mean, look, every year Harris looks more confident. He goes through stretches where he can dominate. 76ers trailing. Simmons with it. One of the dependable scorers on the team. He's averaging close to 17 points a game. Horford, no luck. That's a break for the D right there. I mean, he takes advantage of open looks inside more often than not. Durant kicks to Dinwiddie. Here's Allen. And good work on the boards. They pick up the second chance points. Allen's got his second best. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Yeah, very little resistance. I mean, you had to bring much faster help than that. It puts the D in a tough spot when you have a point guard who can throw it down. He really does, GA. He really does put pressure on you. And guys, it's clear, though, he enjoys showing off his athleticism. The D can't give him these opportunities. Oh, the timing couldn't have been better on that assist. Richardson outside.
Defensively, by using right on the D-pad, you can adjust And the 76ers showing off their style as they arrive at the arena today. No shortage of fashion sense in this one. And the game arrivals sponsored by... I express. Press my hand with three... Well, after all the turmoil in New Orleans last season, there's fresh air in the Big Easy. The Pelicans won the lottery and got number... They are fun to watch, that's for sure, Dave. Thank you. We get a break in the action, so let's take a look at the West and how the teams are stacking up. You take a look at the Pelicans. They're 10th in the conference, still looking to claim a spot for the playoffs. And seeing where the Pelicans are, they're one of those teams that hasn't quite figured it out this year. A lot of talent, a lot of heart, but nothing to put them up on that next level. You know, it's really hard to figure out exactly what's been missing, but there is something missing. It perhaps could be the system they're playing in. I'll look at the 76ers starting group. The tall lineup out there for the 76ers. Simmons, Richardson, Harris, Horford, and MB. And for New Orleans, Ingram the three and Zion the four. Wall and Holiday combine at the guard spots. And it's Favors in at the center, filling out the middle. Ingram passes to Favors. Back to Ingram. Lock at six. Rebound by Joel and B. Philadelphia with the ball. A big X factor for the Sixers, I think, will be the development of Ben Simmons' jump shot. He's got to become at least a threat as a perimeter shooter if they're going to have a chance to win it all. The pass to Harris. Over Ingram. Harris's shot is off. Holiday against Simmons. And Favors kicks the ball. Sweet little floater. Ball's got the first basket of the game for New Orleans. And especially in the playoffs where teams really scheme for you, Simmons shooting can be a real problem for the Sixers. Yeah, it's a major liability, guys. There's no denying. For all of his wonderful ability and versatility, the fact that it's basically four on five when they're on offense with him on the floor is a problem in the playoffs. And you said it. When teams can lock into you, they're going to make you do what you're uncomfortable doing. Simmons passes to Richardson. Passes to Harris. Pass to Horford. Takes a three. And the rebound goes to the Pelicans. The last meeting was in Philadelphia, where they were unable to fight off the 76ers. And their last time playing this club, foul trouble became a big problem for them. Their starters had to take an early stint on the bench. They've just got to be more careful tonight. It's that simple. I mean, those guys are too valuable. They need them on the floor. From 13, and finished off by Horford. <laughs> you know, passes like that go a long way. Terrific teamwork. Ingram kicks to Williamson. Down low. And Ball slams it in. And really an underrated playmaker. Williamson with good court vision and solid decision making. With the floater. That one's in his first bucket of the game. He's one for two. Last outing for the Pelicans. It was a loss to the Kings. We're about three minutes into this first quarter. Ball, no good. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. And you know, guys, I love his fight and grit on the interior. I mean, he never lets a shot go uncontested. And this late in the season, Clark, for non-playoff contending teams, uh, really there's nothing to lose. The pressure is gone. You can let it rip, can't you? Yeah, there's a freedom that you can play with when you don't have the pressure or the expectation of being a playoff team. And sometimes that allows you to play your best basketball because there is nothing to lose. And Simmons kicks to Richardson. MB dishes to Harris. There's the three. And MB the bucket on the assist from Harris. 
Hey, this big fella, Joel Embiid, you've got to guard him out at the three-point line. This guy has a nice stroke. You cannot sleep on him out there. This is the 2KMC, and it's that time. Top plays time. And this week... WNBA on 2K Sports. Moments away, it'll be the Los Angeles Sparks going up against the Indiana Fever. From the 2K booth with Brian Vanifatemi and Tim Swartz, I'm Blake Suniga. Thanks for coming along. And it's the Sparks to start out. And when it comes to veteran players on a team, what characteristics makes for a good leader for the younger players? Now, the ability to turn mistakes into teaching moments is so huge. You have to understand that the younger players are going to make mistakes, so patience is key. And I would also add that you want to lead by example because younger players are very impressionable. So it's important to set a good example every day, not just on the court, but off the court as well. Gray outside. Pass to Ruffin Pratt. Just five to shoot. Debris grabs the board. She just assumes she's going to knock those down when she's as open as she was there. Here's Mitchell. Gray defending. Pass to Dupree. Back to Mitchell. Launches it. That's in. Coming off an assist from Candace Dupree. Veterans like Dupree usually have an advanced feel for the game, and that's part of what allows her to find her open teammates. Now here's Williams. Left side, Parker. Count it. Whatever their plan was defensively that time, it did not work. Not if it results in that shot. Mitchell outside. Baseline J on the way. The Sparks grab the miss. Well, she rushed that one. The D was out of position, but she couldn't make him pay. And she comes up with the deuce. The inside game of Aguba K is so fun to watch. She's crafty down there. Outside Wheeler. They get a hand on it. Gets to the corner and hits it. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Outside Williams. Pass to Agumake. Down low. Chanwa. That shot, no good. Good work defensively by Candace Parker. 
Well, you look at the advanced stats, and of course we love doing that, and then the Sparks stand out in one major way. They try to slow the, the game down as much as possible. Have been last in the league or near the bottom in pace for several seasons now. The Fever leading. Left side, Wheeler. And so she draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. It's going to be on Chelsea Gray. With the offense getting right to the rim, at least they saved the layup. Not some old school defense. Just telling them no easy layups. As simple as that. And I like to see it. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one drops. And with the Sparks and their new pace, it makes sense when you look at their personnel. Well, when you have Parker and Agumake, it's the right play. I mean, those two on the blocks are an absolute force. And the Sparks, they go for efficiency in their possessions, and they try to prevent the game from turning into a track meet. And good on the second, so she makes both. Yeah, and now the Fever are firmly in the Candace Dupree era. And, and, you know, she's a player that's very shifty with the ball in her hands. She knows how to finish and just has a great heads-up awareness to her game. Very clever passing. She put that ball on a silver platter for her. And here in the first quarter, a little over three and a half minutes played. McCowan gets it to go from eight feet. And the Fever made the trade back for Dupree in 2017. And that was a big moment for the Fever as they went out and made the move for Dupree. She's the leader of the team and helping usher in the youth. She's had success throughout her career and will be shepherding the team during this rebuild. Gray, that's good. One of Gray's greatest strengths as a scorer is her versatility.